Good evening, Sunday night, June the 13th, 2021, and we're continuing our study here at First Baptist Church, Salzburg, Indiana, of navigating the New Testament. We've been walking carefully through the teachings of Jesus, the Sermon on the Mount, His parables. Now we're looking at His miracles. We're just going to pick up right where we left off. So open your Bibles to Luke chapter 5. In Luke chapter 5, we find the story that Jesus is at a house in Capernaum or Capernaum, however you choose to pronounce it, and a group of men tried to bring a paralyzed man to him so Jesus could touch him and heal him. The crowds were enormous, and they couldn't get him to Jesus. So they had to find a creative way to get their friend to Jesus, and Jesus miraculously heals the man. So Luke 5, beginning at verse 18, follow along your copy of the Scripture if you would. And behold, men brought in a, brought in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him, being Jesus. And when they could not find a way that they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went unto the housetop, and they let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. Now you see this. This is impressive. They, they figure out how to carry this man, the four of them. They got him on some kind of stretcher type of thing, a cot maybe, pole on either side and some fabric in the middle probably, or, or maybe something with... Uh, cloth that's wrapped and tied together to they could carry it with two sticks the man's in a bed and the four of them are carrying him they go up on the housetop and they start to remove the ceiling and the tiling there and they 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 get some kind of leverage or ropes in a way that they can hoist the man down in front of Jesus and when he saw their faith now that's a powerful expression when Jesus saw the work the effort, the energy, the faith that the men had, all five of them, especially the four who worked to get their friend to Jesus, what does he say? He said, man, thy sins are forgiven thee. Well, the scribes and the Pharisees, picking up at verse 21, they begin to reason amongst themselves, saying, who can speak these blasphemies? Who can forgive sin but God alone? But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, answered them and said, why reason ye in your hearts? Where well, it's easier to say, Thy sins are forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. And immediately he arose before them, took up that which he was laying upon, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed. They glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, we have seen a strange thing today. Now, I, I love Luke kind of downplays some of this stuff, but, you know, we've seen a strange thing today. Yeah, it was. It was crazy. These friends loved their brother so much. They loved this friend so much that they would damage the house, lower their friend down to Jesus. Jesus, marveling at the faith of all involved, the four of them, and we assume the one on the cot, looks at the man on the cot and says, your sins are forgiven. And people start freaking out. Oh, you're blaspheming God. Who can forgive sins? Jesus said, well, what's easier? To say your sins are forgiven or to say rise and walk? He turns to the man and says, rise and walk. And then immediately the Bible says he rose up, grabbed up his cot, and he went home glorifying God. And they were all amazed. They were all glorifying God. They'd seen something wonderful that day, something strange yet incredible. I wonder, who do you love enough to do whatever it takes to get them to Jesus? Who do you love enough to do whatever it takes to get them to Jesus? Are you willing to be inconvenienced if it means somebody gets Jesus to touch them and forgive them their sins and, and they get to be born again and made new? Are you willing to be inconvenienced that the gospel might penetrate the heart of that lost friend or neighbor or loved one? Are you willing to work to get them to Jesus? A man had no hope. They get to the house where Jesus is, the crowd's overwhelming, and I imagine they were all disappointed. They'd heard Jesus was the miracle worker, and all of a sudden they can't do anything about him. Then they have this idea. We'll lower him down through the roof. Now the Bible says that the man took up his bed and 
left there and glorified the Lord going to his own house. I think it's probably a good lesson to think about, but who fixed the roof? <laughs> you know, I think it's important that, that we see this whole story, and, and I know the Bible doesn't tell us the rest of this, but I, can you imagine how excited they were that that man was healed? That was strange, wasn't it? But I could just see the owner of the house going, what about my roof? Now, I don't know how hard it is to replace tiling in a house in the first century, but I suspect it wasn't challenging. And I imagine they fixed it back together. Do you understand that sometimes God works in avenues and channels that we don't always expect? Now, he always works in agreement with his word. He always works in the power of the Holy Spirit. He always works in a way that honors and brings glory to Jesus. And he always works, again, in agreement with his word. But it's usually unusual. That last verse, verse 26, we have seen strange things today. Can I encourage you? Can I offer some in instruction today? Let's do some strange things for God. Bring people to Jesus. Encourage people to find Jesus by whatever means necessary. Get them to Jesus so he can touch them. Heal their sin problem and make them brand new. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word and I pray that you would bless and encourage us as we study together the miraculous hand that you have. Lord, remind us of the miracle of our own salvation and help us to be a part of bringing others to Jesus. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you.